be seated. Before I start, I would like to ask everyone to silence their mobile phone. Thank you. Dear graduates, honored guests, colleagues and students, good afternoon. I would like to welcome you to the IHE Delft Institute for Water Education's graduation and closing ceremony of the academic period 2021-2023. Thank you very much, Swagatan Chakaborty, for your piano performance. Dear graduates, I am so happy to celebrate this moment with you. As IHE Delft alumni officer, I warmly welcome you to IHE Delft alumni community. Today, you will receive your diplomas. This is a recognition of your hard work. Well done. In the past 18 months, you have increased your professional skills and knowledge. You have expanded your worldview. Back in October 2021, you left your countries, your families, your friends. You arrived in Delft, the Netherlands, during COVID pandemic. Difficult, no doubt. You met so many new people from all over the world. You shared classes and working groups. You lived together, ate together, studied together, and party together. And most of all, you learn from each other and you support each other. Now, 18 months later, you are a different person. You look at the world with different eyes. Your mind has expanded. Your classmates, before strangers, and now your close friends for the rest of your life. Congratulations. As of today, you are part of IHE Delft alumni community, the biggest network of water professionals in the world. It includes more than 25,000 alumni from nearly 200 countries. This is a privilege. You will see why when you get to know other alumni, 
in your work, your country, your region, and maybe start to collaborate with them or work together. As alumni, you will be you will benefit from lifelong learning and networking opportunities offered by your alma mater. Use them, benefit from them, and enjoy to stay connected. Alumni are the IHE Delft most important ambassadors. You will be one of them. Thank you very much. Today, we have a full program there will be speeches, more performances, and of course, the moment so many of you have been waiting for, the awarding ceremony. That is why, without further ado, I invite Professor Eddie Morse, IHE Delft Rector, to the stage to give his opening address. Thank you very much, uh, Maria Laura. And uh, I would like to welcome uh, Excellencies, dear colleagues, dear family and friends, and especially uh, you, uh, I think most important persons of uh, this meeting, the students. Soon uh, that uh, will be not uh, the name anymore that we will use. You will become alumni of uh, IG Delft. And I'm uh, really looking forward uh, to that moment. I would also like to thank the people and the institutions who made um, your study possible. And I just name a few. It's the Orange Knowledge Program, uh, the SITS and MENA Fellowship Program, uh, Rotary, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Rabani Foundation, National Funding, and as well, uh, in a number of cases, employers providing you with a study leave or even financially supporting you, or family and friends that have supported you. But also, I would like to thank uh, the Meet the Dutch, um, who are also presented here, uh, who in most cases also introduce you a little bit to the life in Delft and how you can survive. I know that they're always looking forward to keep in contact with you and uh, to stay family of you also when you return home. But I think that uh, the people that uh, maybe uh, you and we should also thank is the fact that uh, your friends and family allowed you actually to come to Delft and to stay here with us uh, for such a long time. And I think it's now time that, uh, that you return and uh, that you get back to the families that you missed. That's not always easy and uh, in some cases uh, even uh, quite uh, difficult at the moment. And I will come back to that in a second. Um, but I do think this is a special day. And, and why is this a special day? Uh, there are different reasons. One, uh, maybe uh, you know about that, but it could also pass uh, your mind because uh, and in, in the end, it's um, not that important for you, but for us as IG Delft, it's quite an important stage. Is you are the last batch of students coming from the 18-month programs. And I think that uh, is something that uh, you will remember. At least I'm quite sure that everybody who has been lecturing you will keep that in their mind. So in that sense, you are also special to them and you're special to us. Another important part, uh, like I mentioned, is uh, international tensions. And uh, they're always changing. Personally, I had hoped that with uh, COVID, uh, we would have found our common en enemy. But uh, clearly, that's maybe not enough for us as mankind. Uh, there are new tensions coming up. An uh, important one is in, in Sudan uh, that uh, we're listening to at the moment. But also in other countries, unfortunately, there are still tensions there. I was listening uh, to the radio uh, this morning and uh, they explained a little bit about the situation in Sudan and what I appreciated there is that the journalist who was talking there, uh, he was also telling a little bit about what he knew from uh, the country and for a country like Sudan, but also for the other countries there, water is uh, very important and especially uh, the Nile. And what he did, he actually explained the connections that Sudan has with the neighboring countries, uh, ranging from Egypt to Ethiopia and to South Sudan. And that water was the connecting material between them. And I hope that water is also uh, the substance that will connect you with us, IG Delft. For sure, it's something that we appreciate and we try to cherish as much as possible. So why is water so important and why is this day so important? 
Now I go back a little bit to maybe the global situation, and uh, I know that you have had a n number of lectures where that has been uh, spoken about, but I do think that this last day, and after that you can um, think about other things, but maybe this last day, a few words about water. Now one thing is, and I uh, don't know if uh, you followed that discussion, but in 2020, the Secretary General of the United Nations, he stated that if we ever want to achieve all our sustainable development goals, and that are the 70 goals ranging from uh, poverty to uh, food, uh, to partnerships, to peace, uh, to the environment, so there are uh, quite a big number of those sustainable development goals, that if we want to achieve them, we have to make sure that we are in order with our water so that we can live together in a good way with water, but that we treat water in a good way. And um, what he was also saying, that that's not the case. So he said, uh, please, please be aware that we need more attention for water. So one of the reasons for that was that they started the accelerator framework. And the accelerator framework for the water sector consists about uh, finance, it's about innovations, it's about capacity development, it's about governance, it's about how you can bring people together. And that was uh, translated then in a meeting that was held um, last month in New York, which was called the UN Water Conference 2023, first time in 46 years that the General Assembly of the United Nations discussed the topic of water. And there, more than 700 commitments were placed on the table. And I think that's where you will play a big role. And that's where I think it's so important that you manage to come to Delft, that you allowed us also to share knowledge with you, but also between yourselves. Because I think if you return home, we do hope that you can play a role in implementing those commitments. Or if you're not on the implementing side, then please raise your voice and state to somebody who's responsible that they made such a commitment and that they should take care of water in the good way. So I hope that with that message that you will turn there and that you will help us to work in the water sector. And I think what for me is important is that you become a true leader for water. And with a true leader, I mean somebody who has acquired knowledge, but who's also willing to stand up and speak out about water and what he or she thinks is important. You can do that, of course, in your professional surroundings, but I also think that you can do that in your community or in your family. So I hope that every one of you will become a water leader in his own rights. And I wish you a very, very good journey towards that leadership. I also hope that you will stay in contact with us. And I think to inspire you a little bit there, we found a very, I think, inspirational speaker for you today. Her name is uh, Lian Po. And apologies if I pronounce your last name incorrectly. But I think what makes her so interesting is um, she has done a couple of MSCs, so she's very much engaged with knowledge, knowledge transfer. Uh, she's also a university teacher, and uh, she still does it at Nero the Business School here in the Netherlands, but also at the Van Hal Larenstein um, Professional University. So yes, she has a background in ecology, business, and philosophy. And I had a look at her website, and she allowed me to say anything I wanted, so she can correct that later on. Uh, but what inspired me from her website is what uh, she mentioned there under the, the topic of actions. She mentioned things like connecting, initiating, writing, learning and teaching, creating, organizing, walking, hiking, gardening, and speaking. The last part she will do today, but she already told me that she enjoyed the walk coming here. What she also does is she mobilizes watersheds. So I think that's already a quite a big thing because that's not so easy. Not everybody realizes actually that they're living in a watershed. And so by mobilizing them is a double challenge. What was most inspirational to me was her last statement there, and that was her dream of drinkable rivers. And that's what she will say a few words about. Lian, may I invite you to the stage? Hello, 
sounds quite symbolic to hear the sound of the new generation, right? It's a, another why we're here, I think. But first of all, of course, um, congratulations to each of you, the students, uh, the family around them, and also the professors and teachers, also congratulations for that support system. Um, a, a, a beautiful achievement and wow, you are so beautiful. And also for the people at home, of course, they have uh, supported you from a distance. And I am very curious with how many watersheds we are here, but uh, maybe someone can make a quick estimate uh, who's good at that. Um, but I feel the richness of all the veins that we embody by being present here, by being aligned with our experience. Um, it's such a synchronous program of 18 months having this journey and inquiring knowledge, um, uh, language, and indeed what has been coming forth today as well, community. And so um, my name is Lian Poa, and actually the name has already some water in it. Uh, Poa means it's from Chinese, and it is uh, a place with a lot of water. So that's something. And um, we got the invitation today to wear something traditional. I'm wearing for the first time a dress from my grandmother. She was a nurse and grew up in Indonesia. And they arrived here after the Second World War. So it feels like I, I have her a bit with me. Um, yeah, you are five different mayors of water-related MSCs. I carry indeed a, a background in business administration, holistic science and philosophy. And this holistic way of thinking is part of my doing, actually. Um, so I'm also the founder of uh, Drinkable Rivers. And I'll tell a little bit about that because uh, I think nobody knows about me yet. So, uh, and then I'll tell a bit about my obstacles. So drinkable rivers, if we have a world with drinkable rivers, um, you might have thought about it and you might have even experienced it. I heard a professor, uh, a teacher of you, who have been drinking from a river in, uh, in Sudan um, and also actually in South Africa, I just heard. So that was very hopeful. Uh, but once we have a world with drinkable rivers again, it will mean that everything on the land is healthy and in balance and contributes to it in a way simple as that, but it's also very ambitious, of course, to go from our situation now to a world with drinkable rivers. For me personally, this started canoeing a river from source to sea in northern Canada, and that river was completely drinkable. I just finished my first study, I was 24 back then, and for a month I drink directly from the river for a whole month. That was such a touching and beautiful experience that tears run down my cheek when I took a sip like this and I remembered again that my ancestors were all drinking like that but I had totally forgotten it. For me, opening the tap like that was normal. So how this, you probably have had about, heard about that shifting baseline syndrome of how normal changes. So I want that this uh, reality, what is still in some places a reality, I want it back actually, and I want that to be normal again. And so I think, um, and some of you might feel that urgency uh, that Eddie Morse was also addressing to you, and also how you can and start to play a role in it. But I think if now we are really, as a civilization, going towards economic growth, but if we are uh, um, uh, uh, going the direction and having a shared compass of a drinkable river, also in our local uh, personal actions, but also as communities and also as entire watersheds in collaboration, upstream, downstream, uh, side river, mainstream, that would mean a whole different world. And in that case, if, and that's what I'm, with drinkable rivers, I'm suggesting if we change going from economic growth towards a world with drinkable rivers as a societal compass and also an economic compass, then your knowledge is essential. You will probably in the future will need to speak more with economists than other hydrologists had done before, um, or with disaster or insurance companies. I think that 
that change in the world and the potential that your skill set has will be enormous and it will be needed. And you might also be the refreshing uh, other perspective if that would be the case. So um, in the meantime of doing that, I, I do it walking rivers, like Eddie was uh, uh, introducing it. So about now I have uh, walked 18,000 kilometers source to sea, and I've been meeting all the people who are living there and, and, and seeing the landscape, how it changes, how it, uh, how it morphs and grows. And, um, and as a result of then the, the walks, I create that as a momentum to create action communities but not with an idea in front of uh, what should be happening, but I'll see what is alive and what emerges. And so, for instance, walking the River Meuse, the river that has fed me all my youth with drinking water, um, a mayor's network has now um, um, been created uh, of mayors and aldermen in Belgium, France, uh, Luxembourg, and in Belgium, Wallonia and Flanders, and also in the Netherlands. And uh, we meet every year, and something like that didn't exist yet. And besides these action communities, we have um, a citizen science program worldwide. And uh, there's a film about uh, the, the river walk. Uh, there will be a Netflix film early next year, and uh, we've written a book that we're happy that will be in English from September onwards. But during this journey of um, starting as a student and then uh, now having a worldwide movement, there I also faced a lot of obstacles, of course. And one of the things was that I started uh, writing like a job letter, job interview. And I know many of you don't need that because you will return to the places where you were already working, but some of you might do, or you might do want to do it in the future. But I immediately got with my first letter, I got a reply, thank you for your letter, but there were hundreds of other submittance and, and I felt a bit like I'm ready for the world, but nobody's awaiting me. So it felt very much a bit lonely and also a bit of, I had high expectations of being, ta-da, I'm here, and no one waiting for me. So I then acquired a skill, which I'd like to put a seed and that you might nurture and maybe master in a few years. And that's called the art of inviting yourself. And so it's something we somehow uh, are grown up with a, a very, very, very being polite, like you don't ask to be a part of the party. Like, I feel very privileged to be part of your party, but I was invited this time. I didn't, I didn't enforce myself. <laughs> but it is something like that you know how to phrase a question, that you can really honor the no, but that you explore the yes. And if you don't, because if you don't do that, you have to wait a long time, probably. So just try and use the art of inviting. And you as, as, as just as, as students, we are already very privileged, but it is a, a value, a, a valuta almost, a, a currency um, that you, you embody be, being, being young and having new perspectives again. Use it even to uh, conferences or in situations that you would think, ah, oh, no, why would I? Let that voice simmer to the background. That's one thing that I'd like to give to you on, on your backpack, on your journey. Then another one, which is a bit related to this, what I learned from the drinkable river and the watershed is that everyone matters. That's the ambition of a drinkable river, right? That all the actions need to be aligned and work towards a drinkable river. If there's one against it, it will likely start to lose that quality of drinkability. So in that sense, everything, everyone, everything you do matters. And so do you. And so this, uh, this uh, voice that makes us smaller, tune that one to the background. You can understand that it's about respecting others, honoring others, but also honor yourself and, 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 and know you matter. So that in, in few, now it might not feel, now you feel like the center of the world today, uh, which is, I think, a very good thing to now also keep remember, anchoring this emotion that you feel right now. Um, 
in times when it will be more difficult, when you feel more alone, um, when you feel less understood or you don't feel that community like you have right now, know that we and this moment is always there as well. Um, so make, make like a small gesture so to anchor this moment for yourself. Then the third thing and last thing that I'd like to give to you on your um, journey facing obstacles and festive moments like now is to take care of what takes care of us. That's something I learned from the many indigenous people I stayed with. Um, and so this is also of taking care of our water because if we take care of our water and the circumstances it needs to create the qualities we, we would like, then the water will provide for us. But this, especially when you're very impact driven, right? It can exhaust yourself. So also remember, if you think about taking care of what takes care of you, is one of the things is yourself. Make sure your heart is singing. It's a compass, an inner compass. So ask yourself, what makes my heart sing? And then if you know the answer to that, allow yourself, go spend time outside, rest, spend time with people that really nurture you, uh, be in silence once in a while. Uh, I'm telling a few things that are really, uh, I have to make conscious efforts to do myself, uh, to remember, but I will be much more effective when I do that. And last but, le let me, uh, last but not least, and it, it feels like a bit uh, interesting to say this in a church also, but uh, we have to learn to deal with our shit. It's uh, about composting. There, there will be shit news coming our way, um, events, um, but we know, we do it on a daily basis, right? So we know how to nurture it into fertile soil. So it is to compost all the negativity in enthusiasm. It's enthusiasm that keeps us all together, that gives us the, the, the lightness to continue our efforts for tomorrow. It gives us the joy for all our young children who are who are dependent on our actions right now. So compost your hope. So again, congratulations. We move forward to that uh, celebration. I, I will be there uh, if you are uh, wanting to interact more with me uh, and also feel very free to adopt the drinkable rivers to also walk a part of your river. Um, I wish you a lot of good luck with your, your future endeavors in the work that you will uh, go back into or the new uh, challenges you will be facing and also a, a lot of return to all your loved ones. I hope you will um, anchor today these emotions, feel the enrichment of the experience, the knowledge, the language and the community and uh, a lot of uh, love and joy. Yeah. Thank you very much, Li Yanpua, for your lovely words. After so many uplifting and motivation words, we are ready for another musical interlude by Alma Mamovic Ivanov, Gabriela Castrellon Romero, and Sugatan Chakavorti. They will perform Two songs, the first one, Gracias a la Vida, Thanks to Life, from Violeta Parra, and they will follow the version of Mercedes Sosa and Joan Baez. And the second one will be Forever Young, from Bob Dylan. Gracias a la vida que me ha dado tanto Me dio dos luceros que cuando los abro
Thank you very much, and a big applause for them. Fantastic. Okay. Now, I invite to the stage Mila Velar Montezuma Cunha from Brazil. And Amancio. And Amancio. Malimad Melat III from the Philippines. They are graduating students and former members of the Student Association Board, and they will give us the year's student address. What a beautiful day, you guys. And what a journey. Maybe today, after all, a word that would be the word of the day would honestly be gratitude. Gratitude for the past, for having a dream. Gratitude for the present, for the process where we are here now and gratitude for the future, for the light of the future. So I would like to start from the past, from the dream. I'm sure that up to 2021, each of us here had a dream. And this dream was a synonym of a cause. This cause made us left more than 60 countries to be here today. And during one of the major global crisis of the 21st century, the pandemic. Some of us here even came from war zones, including Afghanistan, including Myanmar, including Ethiopia, Colombia, and many others. I still remember, <laughs> I still remember when we were still back home that some friends from Afghanistan were really struggling to leave the country and be here today, and how we all try to mobilize ourselves all the way possible to make sure that they would have the right to come here, and they are here with us today. And I really think, I really think that it was just the prelude of what would be our spirit here in this journey. And then it comes to the process itself. And I would like to thank on behalf of the rector, Eddie Morse, all the students, now alumni, that are here today, but also professors and staff that composed this brilliant cell of IAG that made us possible for all of us to be here today. We all managed to arrive to study and graduate at the largest water institute of the planet. Congratulations. This is such a privilege, honestly. And I remember that during our very, very first days here, Eddie Morse asked us a very simple exercise that was to look around and see who is next to you. And I'm pretty sure that at that time we were completely strangers. And this is because as a collective, we represent multiple languages, multiple races. We represent complex stories. We represent multiple cultures, genders, sexualities, perspectives, and challenges. All these features would culturally, as we know, drift people tribes, and even countries apart. And here, it united us. 
with one main goal, water. Perhaps this is our legacy as an UNESCO institute. And honestly, it's been such a complex and exciting human laboratory to be here today. And now, after parties, lots of exams, assignments, and thanks God, no more BBB sessions. <laughs> if we look around one more time, I'm sure that we're going to see close friends. And perhaps this is a lesson for humanity, what we are doing here today. And in this lesson, water seems to be literally everywhere. It seems to be the core of, uh, of conflict, but also cooperation that made us together here. And in this journey, we took some steps forward as a compassionate, concerned, and caring community of us all that goes far beyond technical knowledge. I'm sure of that. We found home in each other, even today. And this home was enough to question in our certain narratives, break some paradigms, and more important, share hope. Maybe this, all these ingredients together of action, challenges, relationships, and perseverance made all of us today this unique and very special class of 2021, 2023. We all made it in our own crazy and exceptional way, but we all made it. And today, when each of you reach this stage, you're not just bringing a tube or a diploma back home. I'm sure that we are all bringing a family. I honestly mean it. So said that, maybe I would like to ask all the graduates to one more time stand up and look around. If possible, look in the eyes. Look in the eyes of each of you. <laughs> and this comes to the third part, maybe, where we share a project right now, a project of hope, a project of the future. And on behalf of this hope, please keep standing, <laughs> just for, for now. <laughs> and on behalf of this hope that lights our future, we thank to the existence of potential tools that are here built today. My friends, we have everything in place. We are seeing highly trained water professionals here. We are seeing friends, we are seeing partners. And as we cross the doors of this church, a new cycle begins, the real life. And in this real life, we need to integrate all of our knowledges towards our shared challenges and towards way more than SDG 6 maybe, which is the better, safer, and more abundant water world, but mainly making sure that no one is left behind and diversity, just as the one that we have here, is central. As Clover, her friend, said, we take action now for no greater reason than what we know what is right and what is wrong. We know that it is not right that every two minutes a child is still dying due to lack of access of clean water. It's not right that 33 million people in Pakistan are losing their, are losing their homes due to flooding. Also, it's not right that still 2 billion people in this planet do not have access to safe and clean drinking water. It's also not right that we still have almost half of the planet without access to safely managing sanity, sanitation facilities. As we look at each other today, I'm sure that we are all activists by essence. And our goal here is more than put the good ideas. It's to bridge the gap between these good ideas and implementation. The project of the future of hope has already started here. And well, this is our collaboratory network. And each of us are seeds here of this future. And we need to spread this all over the world. 
and we know that time and speed are crucial actors right now. As Hank Oving said, today we are celebrating, but tomorrow we accelerate. And we just need to keep setting our hearts and minds towards the same, let's say, planetary what is steep worship. I do believe that we should let's keep building this net future that worth living for together. This future, hope, is all of us. It's here and now. Thank you all and congratulations. Thank you, Mila, for giving us the prelude to giving us this wonderful experience for all of us. You may all be seated. This family of international learners is destined to be here. Just like what Mila said, it is the water world that binds us all together. This journey together could not have been possible without the people whose warmth is felt no matter what the season is in the Netherlands. Mama Loy and Papa Junior, taos pusong pasasalamat sa inyong dedikasyon at ngayong araw tayo ay muling nagtagumpay. Sa Jibay Yemhan Sabki Jithen Hams Asian Bay Behenok Kelye Kaskarke Tumari Me Kelye Jinkotum Sabbeb Hagut Kav Hoha. Hermanos Alvaro y Daniel, nuestras familias latinoamericanas, especialmente en Bolivia y Colombia, y en particular sus madres también, están conmividos y alegres por el logro de hoy. Omega Gerald, Karenidang Mia Africa, Naka Uganda, Amihigi Yom Totuali Iyi, Adwogi Aberaju, Mi Uganda. Indeed, Today is for our families all over the world, especially our parents and guardians who like Jennifer, Rada, Akmur, Blasco, and Yasir want the best for their children. We also rejoice during the past two years the birth of IHE Delph babies of Michel and Andre and Marwa and Jalal. Yet for every birth also comes moments of pain and healing. In our high and low moments, we are each other's family. We also have lost loved ones in the process. Hakmed Aw Sidha, Abdono Bohat Strongho, Baby Ayan Ki Det Kai Bawajud, Bi Abdono Nesabar Se Manage Ki Ya Saab. We are also wholeheartedly grateful to the support of our sponsored TURN families, including the Orange Knowledge Program, the Joint Japan World Bank Graduate Scholarship Program, the Water and Development Partnership Program, the Belinda Gates and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Punjab Irrigation Department of Pakistan, and the Department of Science and Technology of the Philippines. As for me and for the other 13 scholars, we would like to express our gratitude to the Rotary International and Rotary Districts in the Netherlands. <laughs> Further, I'm also deeply thankful for Rotary District 3800 in the Philippines and now my mother club, Rotary Club of Marikina North, for the trust and confidence you unconditionally provided the dreamers like me. May you continue to support the IHE Delph through your worthwhile investment. We hope in return to give back to our home countries and regions in greater capacities and help create hope in the world. Our journey at the IHE Delft is like a pipe playing job. It took a lot of maneuvering to accomplish demanding tasks. We needed to work harmoniously in a concerted manner. In order to minimize the links, this batch is truly appreciative of our world-class program coordinators, William Verbeek, who happens to be a great mentor to me together with Yong Yan and my supervisor, Kristen Sevenbergen, Emanuele, Alessandro, Yap, Laszlo, 
Alvaro, Iona, and Saroj, who imparted the wisdom to the programs to make things work despite the odds. To the members of the Student Association Board, Mila, Hassan, Isaac, and the class representatives, Seth, Abdur, Axel, Sai, Jeddo, Liam, Morena, Poyan, Sharif, Sharif, and Suma, who dynamically found the right mix of activism and charm to deliver in a timely manner the needs and demands of an international family. This gratitude also goes for individuals who were there when we have been vulnerable to shocks. For example, during a minor accident involving myself last year, my hermana Yvonne and Stefan made sure that I was not left behind. To Brother Song, at that time you also guided me to return safe and sound to my home in Mina. Shi fen kan shi ni. It is an understatement when one says that studying in a foreign country is all rainbows and butterflies. Of course, Dutch weather is an exception. So this also goes for some of us who found ways to provide or to save for the rainy days while getting our nth academic degree. For example, I can relate to my neighbor Cusco who started his day as early as four in the morning to work while I also deliver my online classes for the De La Salle University, participate in Jampak Mojo sessions after, and even work after group work. So we thank the Meet the Dutch program volunteers for ensuring our well-being during this rigorous academic calendar. As Rotary scholars, we are also given host counselors that are there as our extended families. As for me, I would like to thank the Lean family of Amersfoort, the Bigma family of Akmar, and the Bigma family of The Hague for treating me as your brother and son. One thing is true though about the Netherlands, that its people are so practical. In fact, this reality has been embedded in its educational system. So one of the highlights of our respective programs was our fieldwork in other European Union countries. We would like to take this opportunity to thank our partners like AgroParitech in France, who have made IHE our IHE journey even more enriching. Further, the IHE has opened doors for us to collaborate with water and, and environment industry leaders. For example, I would like to highlight my continuing partnerships with AOWAG in Zurich as we maintain water flow diagrams and Royal Haskuning DHV as we enhance society together through sustainable water and maritime programs and projects in the Asia and the Pacific. So as alumni of the IHE Delft, the big question is, what is next? While we are in the estuary and the water world is our oyster, let us be reminded to be a sunshine for others. Se como Alejandra, cuya pasión es conectar con la gente a pesar de las diferencias. Kun mis amira alesi tonishid bitatobar ederet al moil fat. Maging katulad ni Karen na hindi napapagod na ibahagi ang kanyang kaalaman lalo na sa mga nangailangan. Irene Ambaye, diplomasya yaki imegemia, kanye misingi yekwali. Be like Tova, whose mission is to fight against forms of discrimination. Jadila sa pertisa sa yang kempemin pininya terilat maluwi pelayan. And be who you want to be, for as long as we continue to make an impact wherever we may be. This address may be unable to capture the gratitude for everyone who has been instrumental to our collective success. But let us not fail to recall for the signif our significant others who in the course of this journey stand beside us despite the circumstances. To the Yin to my Yang who did not attend her own graduation in Singapore or Brazil and is now with me in this Aldkirk, daghang salamat for being my come. To this end, we batch 2021 to 2023 are leaving IHE Delft Institute for Water Education under the auspices of UNESCO to continue living and winning. Danke, Phil.
Well, thank you very much, Milan Amancio. I think that you deserve a big applause again. I didn't hear it very well. Really stimulating words. But now, finally, the time has arrived. Thank you and welcome to our colleagues of the Educational Department. Ready to take position. And we are about to start the Diploma Awarding Ceremony. It's not easy. Are we ready? Are you ready? Very good. We will start the ceremony with the awarding of the Water Management and Governance students. I would like to call Emmanuel Fantini and Professor Swartefein on stage. Well, this is an important message for all the graduates. Please pay attention. Okay. When you come up to the stage, stand between your professor and your coordinator. Take your time, not so long. Pose and take your moment to take the picture with your diploma, your graduation picture. You get into this way, you go out that way, okay? Good. I will call each of you one by one. Ready? And I, we would like to start by Ms. Goibar from, Al Goibar from Iraq. Ms. Al Ogaidi from Iraq. Ms. Arula from Kenya. <laughs> Ms. Borom from the Philippines. Yeah. 
Miss Chan from Fiji. Miss Crystal from United States of America. With distinction. Miss Dehati from Afghanistan. Ms. Darcina from Haiti. <laughs> Mr. Echesi from Nigeria. Miss Garcia from the Philippines. <laughs> Mr. Govindarahulu. Ramalingam from India. <laughs> Miss Hamada from Jordan. Mr. Kamath from India. <laughs> Mr. Como Koroma from Liberia. Miss Lire from Guatemala. <laughs> Mr. Mahanta from India. Mr. Melat III from the Philippines. <laughs> Mr. Muchemba from Zimbabwe.
Miss Muhammad from Egypt. Mr. Rafika from Pakistan. <laughs> Miss Rabindra from India. Miss Said from Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. Tapsova from Burkina Paso. Mr. Tembe from Liberia. The other way, the other way. Mr. Tobey from Liberia. Mistrejo Solís from Mexico. <laughs> Miss Bansi from Belize. and Mr. Vicente Moreira from Portugal. Thank you, Manuel and Professor Suartefein. This brings us to the Water Science and Engineering program. For the specialization in hydroinformatics, modeling, and information systems for water management, I would like to invite Joanna Popescu and Eschalian van Alden to join me on stage. We would like to start with Mr. Abdelaziz from Sudan. <laughs> Mr. Ahmad from Pakistan.
Mr. Badolo from Burkina Faso. Mr. Bat from Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. Diaz Mayorga from Colombia. With distinction, Mr. Fayaz from Maldives. <laughs> Miss Hebre Michel from Ethiopia. <laughs> Mr. Hutomo from Indonesia. <laughs> Mr. Islam from Bangladesh. Mr. Kabe from Zambia. <laughs> Mr. Mirindi from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Mr. Mohamed from Sudan. <laughs> Mr. Nasser from Pakistan. Mr. Perso from Guyana with distinction. Mr. Shazbek from Lebanon. We will continue with a student of the Joint International Masters in Hydroinformatics. We would like to invite Mr. Peñuela Escobar from Colombia. Thank you, Joanna and Scallion. For the specialization in hydrology and water resources, I call on state Jochen Weniger and Professor Schubert. We would like to start with Mr. 
Bamidele from Nigeria. Mr. Brown from Jamaica. <laughs> Miss Do from Vietnam. Mr. Georges from Lebanon. <laughs> Mr. has name from Pakistan. Mr. Ibrahim from Sudan. <laughs> Mr. Kamara from Liberia. Miss Kifle from Ethiopia. <laughs> Miss Muriti from Kenya. Miss Pastora Estrada from Nicaragua. <laughs> Mr. Sardar from Pakistan. Mistrust from Uganda. <laughs> Miss Wilson from Jamaica. and Mr. C from China. Thank you, Johan and Professor. For the specialization in irrigation, engineering, and management for food security, I call on a stage Laszlo Haide and Professor De Freitur. <laughs> we 
We would like to start with Mr. Linga from Philippines. With distinction. <laughs> Mr. Mabak from South Sudan. Mr. Bamardi from Indonesia. <laughs> Mr. Tembo from Zambia. And Mr. Zuluaga Velasquez from Colombia. Thank you, Laszlo and Professor De Fretu. For the specialization in sustainable urban water management, climate resilient cities, I call on stage William Fabeck and Professor Rulfind. <laughs> we would like to start with Abelar Montezuma Cunha from Brazil. Mr. Dean from China. Thank you, William. For the specialization in coastal engineering and port development, could Alvaro Emilio Semedo please show in Professor Rulfing on stage? We will start with Mr. Mohamed from Maldives. Miss Naidu from South Africa. <laughs> Mr. Ruiz Arancibia from Chile. and Mr. Bow from Jamaica. Thank you, Alvaro and Professor Rulfing. For the specialization in hydraulic engineering and river basin development, I call on stage Alessandro Crata. Alessandro Catapan and Alessandra Crosato. We will start with Adur Rahim from Pakistan. Thank you. 
Mr. Akram from Pakistan. Mr. Barua from Bangladesh. <laughs> Mr. Bonda from Liberia. Mr. Chakraborty from India. With distinction. Mr. El Hendi from Egypt. Mr. Junaid from Pakistan. <laughs> Mr. Magbul from Pakistan. Mr. Munir from Pakistan. <laughs> Miss Salsavilla from Indonesia. Miss Sheikh from Pakistan with distinction. Mr. Ishar Urhak from Pakistan. And we will continue with a student of the joint program in water science and engineering with a specialization in hydraulic engineering and river basin development showing program with the University of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We would like to invite Mr. Moksaki from Malaysia. Thank you, Alessandro and Alexandra. This brings us to Urban Water and Sanitation Program. For the specialization in sanitary engineering, I would like to invite Saro Sharma and Professor Brajanovic to join on me on the stage. I would like to ask a little bit of silence, please. We would like to start with Abak Odur from Uganda. Yeah. 
Mr. Antesana Lopez from Bolivia. Mr. Blanco Gómez from Colombia. <laughs> Mr. Daluz Lima Jr. from Brazil with distinction. Miss Ferreira Borges from Brazil with distinction. <laughs> Miss Jordan Sinisterra from Colombia. Miss Lucero Méndez from Ecuador. <laughs> Miss Mativo from Kenya. With distinction. And Miss Nashu from Sudan. Thank you, Professor Brajanovic. For the specialization in water supply engineering, could Professor Maria Kennedy please join Saro Sharma? We'd like to start with Mr. Al Mujeki from Yemen. <laughs> Mr. Cadogan from Guyana. Mr. Camacho Valdez from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> Miss Asia from Ghana. Mr. Malaychami from India. <laughs> Mr. Kate from Afghanistan. Miss Riando from Indonesia. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Safi from Afghanistan. Mrs. Smith from Jamaica. <laughs> Miss Tatu from Lebanon. Mr. Taylor from Barbados. <laughs> Mr. Jamin from Afghanistan. Thank you, Saros and Professor Kennedy. Last but not least, we have arrived at the awarding of the Environmental Science Students. For the specialization in environmental planning and management, I would like to invite Yap Evers and Professor Arvin on stage. I would like to ask, please, a little bit of silence. We will have time for the pictures later. It's too noisy. We would like to start with Mr. Bashir from Sudan. Miss Conte from Sierra Leone. <laughs> Mr. De La Cruz Álvarez from the Dominican Republic. Miss Indarshid from Guyana. <laughs> Miss Mohamed from Maldives with a secretary. And with distinction, <laughs> Miss Sabajo from Suriname. We will continue with the specialization in environmental science and technology. Please, Yap Evers and Professor Arvin remain on stage. We would like to start with Ms. Adedeshi from Nigeria. Miss Actor from Bangladesh. Yeah. 
Mr. Atrah from Iraq. Mr. Assad from Afghanistan. <laughs> Mr. Biljaminu from Nigeria. Miss Elmanadeli from Egypt. <laughs> Miss Herrera Paiva from Colombia. Mr. Massivo from Kenya. <laughs> Mr. Nahley from the Syrian Arab Republic. Mr. Odiachi from Nigeria. <laughs> Mr. Open Ado from Ghana. and Mr. Palambam from Indonesia. We will finalize with a showing program in environmental science with a specialization in immunology and wetland management with the Egerton University of Kenya and the Universita für Bodenkultur in Vienna of Austria. We would like to start with Mr. Okumu from Kenya. <laughs> Ms. Katusime from Uganda. Miss Kisha from Kenya. <laughs> Mr. Nokosve from Zambia. Mr. Omondi from Kenya. And Ms. Turiamuk 
Haki from Uganda. Thank you, Yap and Professor Arvain. Okay. So, no more cues. Congratulations to all our dear new alumni. Our best wishes. I hope you will remember today fondly and experience it as a milestone in your professional and personal lives. Hopefully, you will stay in touch among you and with us at IHE Delft and keep us up to date on where life is taking you after obtaining your MSc degree. Keep always your contact details up to date with IHE Delft and stay connected. Now, I would like to invite Professor Eddie Morse, our rector, back on stage to officially close the ceremony. I would like to start by congratulating all of you with your new diploma. So, super well done. But I do think that, um, as stated before, you can't do this alone. Uh, so, you, you have been helped by a lot of people, sometimes by your colleagues here in the bank, sometimes uh, people sitting on that side, lecturers, supporters. I think uh, a lot of people have contributed to that. Uh, sometimes you also had uh, a couple of challenges to overcome. And I think that uh, you managed to do that. So I would like to congratulate you with that. I think your start was super difficult to come here. And then uh, I hope that uh, with now and returning to your country, which is the case for most of you, but unfortunately not for all of you, I would like uh, to wish uh, everybody good luck with their dreams. Make them come true. and. Please, like Maria Lohr also said, please stay in contact with us because we're quite interested to see also how we can continue our collaboration. And I think there are some interesting things that we may offer to you as well later on in your career, uh, but hopefully also quite soon. So I know that some of you already have some sparkling ideas on what they want to do and how they want to continue that collaboration. And like I said, I really looking forward to that. With that, I would like to thank all the colleagues also of IHC for organizing this, all the people sitting around here. Super well done. I know that not everything went as smoothly as sometimes it seems. So some people were running double as hard as they did before to make sure that everything was in order. A small group sitting over there, so congratulations for that. And with that, I would like to invite everybody sitting here to come to IHC and have a drink with us to congratulate you again. So thank you all and good luck. Maria Laura, will you invite everybody for a picture? Thank you very much, Eddie. And of course, we must have our photo moment. So the photographer, Hans, will take a few photos from the stage now. And after the cortege has left, we will also, he will also take some group photos from the organ balcony. So new graduates who would like to be in that picture, you had to gather in that place under the balcony there after the cottage left. But we will start with the first picture, so I invite you to stand up, 
show your diplomas and enjoy the first picture. Be applause for all graduates, please. Thank you very much. Before we leave, a word of caution. Take care of your diplomas. They cannot be replaced. They cannot be duplicated. So please keep them in a safe place all the times, including tonight's party. And it is recommended to make a PDF of the document. Good. This concludes the official part of our program for today. As our rector has said, I invite everyone in the audience to join us as we continue celebrating at Aichi Delft. Graduates, please remember to stay for the pictures on that side. Just now, as the cortege leaves, we will enjoy a final musical performed again by Sugatan Chakaborty. May I ask you all to stand up while the processions of the cortege leaves the church. Thank you very much. Thank you.